on this episode of This Is Game Boy, It Takes Two to Tango. Welcome to This Is Game Boy episode. What episode are we on? Seven. Six, five? Seven. Seven. Oh, seven. <laughs> Welcome to episode seven, uh, where we talk about true lies. I am E Bloody Candy, and with me I have Mula. Say hi, Mula. Hello. And what have you been up to? Oh man, I've been uh, I've been playing some games. Like, uh, I mean, that's not a surprise, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> I've been doing like a lot of different stuff. Um, just on my own, I have been playing a little bit of Enter the Gungeon, which is so, so hard. Like, I'm so bad at that game. It's unbelievable. But I'm having fun with it. Uh, the problem is I am playing it on my, <clears throat> my Switch. And uh, my Joy-Con, my left Joy-Con, the analog stick of it is pretty much ruined forever. Um, I tried fixing it, but it doesn't work, so I'm going to have to get a new one. But the problem is that it just uh, goes up whenever it wants to. So it's really hard to control characters or just to even have them uh, be still. Uh, so I, I keep running into stuff. It, it's not a good thing to play one of those games with. Um, for people who don't know Enter the Gungeon, it's like a rogue light or rogue like. I don't even know what the correct term is anymore. Uh, where you just go deeper and deeper into a dungeon and hope you survive. But I've never been able to make it past floor two, so <laughs> I'm really, really bad at it. But yeah, that's just uh, a little bit of me time. Um, besides that, this weekend um, I bought Spyro Reignited. And just before we started this podcast today, I actually completed Spyro 1. Oh, that took me that's nine short, hours. Man. <laughs> wow yeah it's it's really easy there's really nothing to it uh just uh want to say something about whoever wrote that article um <laughs> reviewing spyro and saying it was uh starting to turn into the dark souls off whatever I have no idea what that person have be has been playing, actually, because this is probably one of the easiest games of all time. It's made for children um, from the start of, so I have no idea what, uh, what that person was doing, but please learn how to play a game before you even review a game. Um, it's something that comes up a lot um, when, when looking at online reviews. And it's something that actually bugs me. Uh, people are always calling everything really hard and I don't know where they're getting it from. Anyways, Spyro, easy game. Very good game, very good remake. Uh, so yeah, definitely check it out if you like Spyro. Um, then moving on to my stream. Um, it's the three-year anniversary of Portable Pleasure, my, uh, <laughs> my system challenge. So, <clears throat> I've been playing a few games, like I did all the FIFA games. Maybe I said that last time, I don't remember. Um, uh, I played through those, I played through Magnetic Soccer, so that's basically... What a good game. <laughs> it's alright, oh. yeah. It's basically five sports slash football games I knocked off the list just to get rid of them. Um, and then I needed to play a game for the podcast... <laughs> <laughs> a little something called Mole Mania. Um, yeah, you'll you'll find out all my thoughts about that next week. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was a journey. It was fun watching you stream that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody who watched the, the last stream I did of it had fun during the last 45 minutes of it. <laughs> That's why I also did not include it in my highlights. But yeah, more on that uh, on the next episode. Uh, and just because I needed a break from Game Boy after that game, because puzzle games always uh, tire me out, um, I started playing a little bit of uh, Castlevania Lament of Innocence, which is uh, so far a really cool game. I'm actually impressed. I did not even know there were PS2 Castlevania games. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that one because it's actually pretty easy. So yeah, that's that's everything I've been doing. What are you uh, doing right now or before? Wow, you're busy. Um, let's see here. I I beat I beat Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I don't know, like 
four weeks ago, five weeks ago, or something like that. So that's probably on the last podcast. But right after Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I played Assassin's Creed 2, <laughs> the remake on PS4. Um, and, and then I, I needed a break from Assassin's Creed. Um, so I did some... I did some Game Boy Adventure stuff. I did uh I did Magnetic Soccer. Um I did Rodland and um one other game. Oh, um that Indian in the in Indian of the Big City game. Uh, yeah. I don't know the French the French name of it. Um I played those three. Uh I beat Red Dead two uh Friday night this past Friday. It was like a fifty hour campaign. Like it was long. Good game, but long. Uh, and then yesterday, you and I played Pokemon Let's Go for a few hours, and I and I got I got to the rock tunnel. Yeah, I just cleared it as well because I stopped last night because I was too tired to go on, um, and suddenly my stream also dropped, so I, I I had to stop anyways. But yeah, it's uh it's been pretty fun. It's a cool I game. must say, like um, yeah, yeah, we, we'll do a, a comparison episode between that and the original one day in the future probably after we finished uh, let's go because like i made that promise to ple last time <laughs> so so we're gonna have to so that could be fun but yeah it's it's an okay game like i have nothing against it i've been pretty giddy the whole time like i i every every encounter i've had i've just loved <laughs> like I, I i i yeah i'll give you more We'll we'll talk about more about it later, but yeah, I got my third badge um, last night, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, I'm done there." I was like falling asleep at like six p.m. Um, other than that, yeah, that I, I just been playing long games. So I just not a whole variety of games, just three really long games. <laughs> yeah, 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 kind of the same for me, really. That's why I haven't been playing that many games. Like Enter the Gungeon is just something you pick up for like twenty minutes or thirty minutes. Uh, yeah. at a time and, and then you just put it down again but uh yeah mole mania was 14 hours uh yeah spyro was only nine hours okay but i was also still doing dragon quest which i still haven't finished after 75 hours so so it's a lot of long games so it's it's harder to pick up other stuff yeah i guess the game i play in my spare time I is this is the 14th anniversary of wow <clears throat> which is a Mind blowing that I've been playing that game for fourteen years now, mm-hmm. um, and I started playing Maple Story too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, that was that is actually the only MMORPG I ever kind of enjoyed, uh, the original Maple Story, uh, until they came with a new uh, class in that, and then suddenly you could level up from level one to one hundred in like twenty minutes. Uh, meanwhile, I I spent like 100 hours getting to 50 or something, so I was kind of pissed off about that. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> it's a I pretty fun playing. game. But yeah, I, I'm so, I'm totally not into MMORPGs at all. I I feel for me at least it's a waste of time because I don't like playing games that have no ending. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, MMOs for me are just like a time sink. Like I don't want I don't have time to stream. Or, like, I don't want to stream, like, it's a day off or whatever, but, like, I'm bored and I don't want to, like, sit and watch TV or do anything. I just kind of, like, sit around on the computer, so I'll just, like, open up WoW or Maple Story 2 or whatever and just, like, poke around on there for a few hours before I have to, like, be an adult and do something. <laughs> yeah, I usually, on my off time, I usually watch, like, series or movies so that I'm not gaming at all. I game enough, enough already, so <laughs> I need a break from that sometimes as well. Yeah, I know, like, at work, like, I stare at a computer for eight or nine hours at work, and I come home, and it's like, well, I got a stream tonight, so I'm going to stare at a computer for another four hours. Like, I got to try and find, like, that break in between work and then streaming to where I'm not looking at a computer for, you know, 20 hours a day, basically. Yeah, that's exactly what I have to do as well. Desk jobs after uh, behind a computer, and then get home, go behind your computer. Yep, it's tough. Yeah, it really is. Like it, it strains my eyes so much. Like it, it's unbelievable. And wearing glasses, uh, and wearing glasses, you got that glare and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It, like my eyes strain, my head starts to hurt, and it's like, all right, I need to get away from the computer. Yeah, it's just a little like when you do do uh, work in a harbor or, or stuff like that. It's like physically draining, but sitting behind a desk all day is, is very mentally draining. So. Uh, yeah. 
I like, that's why I usually in the weekends I tend to go out a lot just to get away from everything a little bit. But that's also not always a a thing that I can do, so yeah. Yeah, my, my weekends are kind of weird. Like, I'll usually stream most of the day on Saturday. And then, like, Saturday night I may go to the brewery or whatever. Just to get, like, a, just to get one or two drinks. And, like, Sunday, I'll usually go to, like, the... Uh, so, um, I studied art in college. So, I'll typically, like, once a month or twice a month, I'll go to the art museums in the city where I live. Yeah. And uh, we have, like, two or three of them that I'll walk around and visit. Like, we have a sculpture garden. We have, like, museums. We have exhibits and everything else. And, like, every once in a while I'll go through those just to, like, clear my head of, like, everything. <laughs> so... Yeah, those are definitely good things. Yeah, yeah. I just go to the bar and get drunk, <laughs> <laughs> and then I always have a hangover when I have to do podcasts, recording, and stuff like that. <laughs> we'll uh, never learn. Yeah. Nope, nope. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we've been up to. Uh, when we come back from this break, we'll talk uh, more about the true lies from the Game Boy. Welcome back, everybody. Um, True lies, Mo. This was your. This is your. This was your choosing. Yeah, like not every time we're gonna pick up one of the all-time greatest games on Game Boy. Sometimes I just like to pick something that is not bad, at least uh, just something in between. But maybe a game that a lot of people have never heard of or even played uh, on Game Boy, at least. Uh, because True Lies came out on a lot of different systems. Um, they all are kind of similar, but I think the Super Nintendo version is the most well-known or the Sega Genesis version. Uh, but yeah, they're they all just basically games based on the hit movie from 1994, True Lies. Uh, yeah, I, I hope everybody has seen that movie. I mean... Yeah, if, if you have it, you should probably go see it. Yeah, it's it's a really good movie. It's a James Cameron movie. Uh, so it's kind of in the in the aftermath of like when he did uh, Terminator and stuff like that. Because, again, this is with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So uh, they kind of worked a lot together. Uh, so it's a really good action flick. Um, and it's a pretty long one, actually. I was surprised because I was re-watching it before this podcast. Uh, I was surprised that it had a two hour and 10 minute runtime or something like that, which is really long for a typical 90s action movie. But then again, Terminator also had a very long runtime. So kind of kind of a thing for Cameron back in that day, I guess. Yeah, I feel most of Arnold's movies were like two two hours long. Really, though? Because I think, I, think, I think so. Like Commando is not that long of a movie, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. I mean, Last Action Hero is like, what, hour 45, almost two hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, like every, yeah, I always think of, of those movies to be really short, but I guess I'm wrong. Like Die Hard is also not an hour and a half. It's, it's also longer. Huh. Well, Die Hard's Die Hard's a good movie. Yeah, so. Die Die Hard is the best movie. Like <laughs> it's almost Christmas time, everybody. Get your copy yeah, 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 of yeah. Die Hard now. Get your get your Blu-ray copy of Die Hard and watch those nineteen eighties physics or <laughs> effects and Blu-ray. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this game is probably made by my second favorite or published by my second favorite company of all time, LJN. <laughs> I think um, it's nobody's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> um, but uh, Chrome Studios in Melbourne, I, I've never even heard of these guys. Um, obviously, obviously Melbourne out of Australia. Yep. Um, like I've I've never I've I've never heard of these guys. Like I I vaguely remember seeing Beam Software when I played the game, but like, I'd never, I, I don't know what they did. Mm -hmm. You know, I just never knew. Yeah. They were actually pretty well known back in the day, at least. Uh, yeah. 
well, <laughs> maybe maybe not famous, but more infamous, because uh, none of their games really outshined anything. Uh, but yeah, uh, Beam Software itself was indeed from uh, Australia. Uh, they were founded in 1977 by Alfred Milgram and Naomi Bezen, I believe that is pronounced. Um, and they were from Melbourne, um, and they made a lot, a lot, a lot of games for a lot of different companies, uh, LGN being one of them, because... Um, if you maybe we've touched upon this in the past or maybe you've heard already lgn never really in-house developed any game they always asked uh, different companies to actually make the games and they just produced them um, like rare did a lot of their games beam did a lot of their games there must be millions of others um, sadly lgn never paid them well so most of the games are pretty trash tier um, but yeah th this one is okay I guess. I mean, it's, it, not it's a fun game. Uh, but yeah, now Beam Software does not exist anymore. Um, in 2000, it was actually bought by Infogrames, uh, something I touched upon a little bit more in my light episode. Um, they changed the name to Melbourne House. And in 2006, they actually sold it again to Chrome Studios. And now it's called uh, Chrome Studios Melbourne. I don't know if they're making anything special right now. I could not find that. But they did make a lot of Game Boy games, actually. So um, here's a few of them, which you might recognize. Um, they did Marble Madness, Boulder Dash, Terminator 2, the arcade game. Uh, We're Back, Agrosaur. So those versions, I don't know if Bamsey and um, what's the other one? Baby T-Rex got... Baby got, T-Rex. Yeah, they, they, it was just a sprite change, so I guess you can say that Beam Software made all four of those games. Uh, we got Hunt for the Red October. We got, surprisingly, I did not notice, Itchy and Scratchy Miniature Golf. Um, that game is hard. Yeah, it's also a very out-of-the-box one, uh, besides all of these other ones. But yeah, none of them were uh, really high flyers in the Game Boy library. And if you look at their games from other systems, um, they're never really popular either, sadly. I didn't realize they did um, <laughs> Hunt for Red October. Because that, that's, a, that's a game. <laughs> that is definitely a game. Yes, yeah, some of these are like really weird when you when you look at it. Like Hunt for the Red October is like a submarine. How can you call it a platformer? I don't know. Exploration? I, yeah. I don't know. Anichi and Scratchy is a sports platformer. It's it's weird. It's like a mini golf platformer. It's super weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're back. That game is something else. Marble Madness wasn't bad for Game Boy. That was actually a pretty decent game. Yeah, it's um, decent. Yeah, I think the NES version was also made by Beep. It could have been. I mean, yeah, those games are fun if you like those types of games. T two, the arcade game. That's a man. They're kind of all over the place. But like, yeah. just looking at the titles right here, like they are just all over the place in terms of genre. <laughs> yeah, they really did a lot of things. Sadly, none of them were super well made again might have something to do with how much the companies that ask them to produce the games uh, paid because some of these are lgn t2 the arcade game definitely because um, lgn really bought every movie license ever during the 80s and 90s um so yeah um weirdly enough right now if you look for beam software uh, you actually get something completely different than you would have expect um uh, some company actually took the name and now it's a debt management and collection software platform that combines a monthly subscription model with the most comprehensive family of collections, recovery, outsource, vendor management, debt purchasing and performance auditing software available today. So yeah, they, they definitely do not make video games, but now if you're in debt, you can go knock on their door. Well, I mean, a subscription model... I mean, yeah, I don't Nintendo know. Online Services, <laughs> yeah, PSN, Xbox Live, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and which has not nothing, completely nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, uh, diving into the publisher, um, as we mentioned, it is LGN, but also kind of not LGN. Um, by this time, they were actually already bought by Acclaim. Um, and the reason the reason for that is um, LGN was actually bought by Music Corporation of America before that even. Um, so they were the biggest shareholder they had. 
But LJN, being a actual toy company, they produced some faulty toy gun, and the profits of uh, Music Corporation of America just plummeted oh, because of that, and then they sold it to Acclaim just to get rid of them. Yeah, it's like some like a little more background history on LJN. Like LJN not only was in the video game business as well, they also made toys for children. Um, and these toys, they were okay. They were subpar. I, I must have had a few laying around. Um, and they, they even tried their hand oh, at making yeah. a console once upon a time, and that was fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. Um, so LJN was doing a lot in the 80s and early 90s. But um, yeah, by, by mid-90s, like people started recognizing the LJN name and started getting a bad rap. Um, that MCA bought them, uh, but yeah. still kept them as the LJN name. And then, um, yeah, after MCA was like, wow, this is a terrible idea. Like, there's like, hey, who wants this company? And Acclaim hurry up and ate them up. So, like, this game came out in 1995. Movie came out in 1994. Um, so, by now, like, LJN is officially a part of Acclaim, but they're still using the LJN publishing mm -hmm. name, I think, for the next, like, two or three years. Um, and then after that, they'll just be completely absorbed by Acclaim. So, uh, very, it's actually a pretty interesting company. Like, if you, like, read, if you read the history of LJ and, like, followed what they, what they went through in the 80s and 90s, like, it's a very interesting company um, for how they started to how they ended and just every, everything in between. Like, they were all about buying movie t movie licenses, comic licenses, like your Spider-Man games for the uh, SNES. Mm -hmm. Like, those are LJN. Game Boy as well, all of them. Yeah, Game Boy. Like, it's insane, like, what LJN had their hands in and the fact that they just made shoddy product or produced shoddy product. Um, just, it caught up with them eventually and it just led to their downfall. Um, but yeah, like, in true LJN... Uh, fashion, we couldn't find any information on the composer for this game at all. <laughs> yeah, the, the, there, are, there are basically no credits for this nope. game. It just ends so... Um, and also not when you're waiting on the title screen or anything. In some games they do that. When they have like credits after the title screen sequence after a, a few minutes. Yeah, but this game just has nothing, so... No idea who actually made the music for his game. Yeah, and even and like the the music itself, like I, I was just telling Mo this during our during our first break. Like I didn't remember any of the music in the game. I remember it not being bad, but I remember it not being like memorable at all. So I actually went back to my playthrough and listened to it, and uh, it's it's not bad. It has a nice rhythm. It has a nice beat to it, but it it it's missing it's missing a lot of like characteristics to make it like a fantastic sound type deal like it's just like your basic like boom, 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 like type thing but uh like but you hear that in literally every 8-bit game you've ever played so it just kind of just blends into everything else like it's not awful but it's not you know it's not outstanding either yeah sadly um but again that goes for uh, most lgn games anyways uh either produced by Rare or by uh, by Beam or any other company. Um, they're never right, really yeah. that good. Like, the only one I remember from uh, the top of my head is the Spider-Man 3 on Game Boy, one of the tracks, and, and that's the only thing I can actually remember of any LGN game at all. I can remember the title screen for Amazing Spider-Man 1 on Game yeah, Boy. Yeah. Only because that haunted me as a child. <laughs> Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like it, the, the nice thing about this game, honestly, though, when it comes to the music, is every stage has a different song. It's not like how we, when we talked about Max or um, Rubble Saber 1 briefly, like <clears throat> the music is almost the same throughout every stage. Like there's only like three or four different songs throughout the entire game. Like this game had different music in every single stage. And depending on the stage, like the intensity of the stage, the music actually did match that. Like uh, one of the like one of the stages, you're in a mall, and in the mall, like everyone's just shooting at you, like like mad. 
and and the music reflects that like the music is is really high tempo it's really like intense and then when you get to the dock it's a little bit more laid back you have to go collect some things or blow some things up mm-hmm. whatever it is um but there's a rhythm to it the entire time you know it's it's like i said like the music's not awful but it's not great um but at least it changes it's not the same thing for two hours mm-hmm. Yeah, and the weird thing about the music of this game, um, what we usually do when we are picking tracks to put in the episodes and stuff like that, um, there are plenty of websites out there that uh, feature the entire soundtracks of pretty much every game you can think of. This one, not to be found anywhere. Um, So Lex is going to have a little bit more trouble actually finding game for this music. Um, But yeah, if there's like somebody out there who knows how to actually extract songs from uh, from Game Boy ROMs please please do and and upload them to one of those many sites that just uh, that just have all those soundtracks because otherwise it might get lost forever which would be sad it's not that hard to do there's a couple of softwares after to do it like you can plug your super game you can plug your super game boy 2 whatever it is into your into your uh frame meister or whatever it is that you're capturing and you can use um there's a couple of them out there i can't remember off the top of my head what the names are and you can just rip the audio right out of it so i i did that for a couple games already no oh, okay yeah see we we got we got you covered for everybody who wants a true life soundtrack for game boy <laughs> <laughs> soon available somewhere on the internet i guess um but the plot of this game you're you're much better at plot stuff than I am forever and ever. <laughs> even even if you've ever listened to like a light that I did about a game, I suck at telling what the plot is. Um, but it, it it very much follows the movie. Yeah, pretty much. Like, of course, there are some scenes in the movie that could not be translated to an action-packed Game Boy game, um, like the, the the stripping scene and stuff like that. That wouldn't work. Uh, but uh, yeah, for most <laughs> most of the time, it just follows the actual uh, the actual plotline of the movie. So if haven't, people haven't seen the movie yet, uh, here's a little. Uh, little description about it so um you are harry tasker played by arnold schwarzenegger of course uh who leads a double life to his wife helen played by um J- jamie, jamie lee curtis. curtis and his daughter dana played by i she has I a forgot her name yeah already. she has a hard name um whatever she's um, uh, she's jessica jones nowadays oh yeah, it's Duchek or some Duch. Yeah, it's yeah. something crazy. It's Jessica Jones. Yeah, no, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. So um, he is uh, for his wife. He's a computer salesman, often away on business trips. While in reality, he's actually a covert operative for a U.S. counterterrorist task force called Omega Sector. Um, and Harrow and his Harrow, okay, Harry and his fellow agents. Albert Gibb Gibson and Faisal infiltrate a party in Switzerland where they learn of the existence of a terrorist group known as the Crimson Jihad led by Salim Abu Aziz. And then it's up to them to stop uh, stop that terrorist group for, from, I think, nuking uh, a lot of places. I think that's, that's what eventually happens. Uh, but yeah, the game really just follows that. You start in Switzerland at a party, uh, you go into the mall... You end up at the island after he gets kidnapped, and then you go back into the city onto the skyscraper to take down uh, Salim Abu Aziz. You gotta fight a Harrier as the final boss. It's actually pretty cool. It's hard. It's actually pretty tough. Well, I'll well, say something about well, that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, a couple cheese threads you can do, too. Yeah. But. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, they translated this movie into a top-down action game, uh, kind of in the style of uh, Die Hard, I guess. Alien um, 3. I've, I've never played that game, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's like a top-down shooter. Um, wait, let me think of a, a new... Hotline Miami, for example. That's, that's a newer generation Ooh, of those games. Um, good comparison. Yeah, I don't like that game, actually. But, what? What? Uh, no, I think it's it, I think it's awful. But yeah, it's one of those Looking games. Looking for a new host. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just one of those games. So you go around uh, on a pretty small map, I would say, but it could have multiple floors, um, where you're either trying to take down all the enemies, 
or you can just ignore them and walk past them actually <laughs> but that's that's sort of speed run section um yeah you you just take down all the enemies you find new weapons you can use like a grenade launcher a rocket launcher actual grenades uh uzi anything you can think of to take down everybody um and you're either trying to fight an item in the stage to progress or you're just uh, trying to destroy certain things to make the level end and then you always have to get to the exit i think yeah they yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's that's pretty much the that's, entire game yeah that is um i don't remember how many levels there were offhand but uh yeah me neither i, I think it might be six or seven um i think there's one stage that has nothing to do with the movie where you're in a park and you're trying to uh trying to stop the terrorists in the park that's something that doesn't happen in the movie but yeah, oh, yeah. They, the park, they have yeah. to make more more stages of course it kind of reminds me of um siphon filter on uh playstation <laughs> where you go into the park to defuse all the bombs it's kind of something like that i think you might even have to defuse bombs as well so maybe siphon filter got its inspiration from true lies <laughs> How fantastic would that be if that yeah, was the case? I, yeah, I don't know. Like, Siphon Filler is kind of like a covert ops... Uh, yeah. U- U.S. counterterrorism thing. group. So, yeah, it could, it could be. But uh, general reception of this game... I, I couldn't find nothing on Game Boy in terms of reception. I don't think anyone knew this existed on Game Boy. Mm-hmm. But everyone loved the SNES and Genesis... Well, not loved, I guess, but played the yeah. SNES and Genesis version. Love yeah, they're is a just strong word for this game, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're just beefed um, up versions of this game, basically with pretty colors. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> colors and better sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah I couldn't find um, anything either. Yeah, like it's it's always tough when it comes to Game Boy, and the game was ported, or the game was on multiple consoles. Like True Lies, for example, is on Genesis, it's on SNES, it's on Game Gear, it's on Game Boy. Like it's on like a plethora of different consoles. Chances are people are either going to play it on the Genesis or the Super Nintendo just because mm-hmm. like that was a household thing. You know, the Game Boy was too, but if people really wanted to play a video game, they bought it for the Super Nintendo or their Genesis. Um, so whenever there's a game like that that's across, across multiple platforms, it's really hard to find reception on, on the Game Boy version just because everyone played it on the bigger uh consoles like snes genesis nes whatever um every once in a while you'll get a couple but yeah truly as i couldn't find anything game facts i think had it as like unforgivable or whatever but you can't ever listen to game facts so no that that's a pretty terrible side to uh to take for granted like like it it always says it takes like 10 hours to beat a game and meanwhile it's a 20 minute game and yeah, it's it's weird ratings. I know it, most of them are user ratings, but I think some just type in something to have a rating. Yeah, let's see here. It says, for game facts right now, I just looked it up. Uh, seven, seven users have completed this game, uh, not rated. So that just mm-hmm. tells you how much mm-hmm. they care right now. Uh, it says length, 4.3 hours, which... Eh, yeah, could be. Yeah. It's all right. It's not bad. I think I beat it in two. Yeah. Uh, difficulty just right to tough. Okay, I can, ranked, I can get into and, that. And it's ranked 157th hardest Game Boy action game. Um, <laughs> no, now, now that is that is well, I don't know what the others <laughs> are. I'm not gonna look up that entire list, but yeah, it's it's not a tough game. It it provides you with a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, one ups if you just explore oh, a yeah. little bit. Um, it. I'm not sure if it has unlimited continues, but I'm sure it does have continues, I think. It might, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I never even game over it, so that, that's not really an issue. You have plenty, plenty of lives. Yeah. Oh, here we go. A reader review gave it a 4 out of 5. Ah, wow. That's, that's actually wow. very generous. Very generous. The typical rating for this game is a 2.9 out of 5, according to GameFAQs. Yeah, okay. I, I can get behind that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, so. like graphics wise, it, it does not have a lot to offer. It's uh, pretty lackluster and standard. Like it's not you can not like you can ex- uh, distinguish. Yeah, I can talk. It's not like you can distinguish yourself uh, as being Arnold Schwarzenegger from like any of the terrorists or anything. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, 
if you've played any Arnold Schwarzenegger game, do you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in those games? <laughs> no, and it's also pretty pretty <laughs> pretty tough to do a top down view of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, what would you even uh, even make out of that sprite? To be honest, it's yeah. You know what the game? You know what the game graphically reminds me of? It's Mission Impossible for the NES. If you've ever played that. I've ever seen oh, it. it reminds me no, a lot of Mission Impossible for NES, mm-hmm. like it, just just the graphical style of it. The game itself honestly reminded me of Die Hard. Like, well, so I can't use Alien Three as a comparison because Mo has never played Alien Three for Game Boy. Um, <laughs> I have played you, it. I have played it. But if you've played Die Hard for the NES, the game plays very similar to Die Hard for NES. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it 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 also kind of, and this is my this might be a game we should talk about in the future, which is pretty much a better version of this game, uh, which is uh, James Bond 007 for Game Boy. Oh, it's actually kind of like that, but uh, without all the puzzle elements that James Bond provides. Um, or Total Carnage. Or, uh, yeah, the Pleasure Dome. <laughs> Nobody should get to the player dome. It's not worth your time. I got, I did it. <laughs> yeah, Super worth it. Maybe we'll do an episode on Total Carnage someday. What uh, a game that is. Oof, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell how much Mo likes that game. I um, like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this one is better than because it actually has fun <laughs> levels. Because <laughs> it has color. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of color... Did you check out the box art for this game? I did. Um, and what's more do it's you a need? Lot, it's a lot of Arnold. <laughs> yeah. You don't need much more, basically. You need the logo of the True Lies movie, and you need Arnold, and it will sell. Um, basically, like, the the cover is Arnold and his dress dress shirt in the, uh, taking, like, a third of the box, basically, just staring at you. Mm-hmm. Right below that, he's in a cut-off jean, jean jacket. Looks like scaling a building of a sort. And then on the other side of it, he's flying a Harrier. (laughs) With the True Lies logo, like, right in the middle of it all. It's so good. It it screams 1990s. Like, it just screams 1990s. Yeah, they're all just stills from the movie, of course, that they put on the box cover. But, yeah, Yeah. it's it's amazing. It's so good. (laughs) It's great, Arnold great good poster. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, now he's getting old. Yeah, what is he, almost 70 now? now? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Hey, he's still making movies, though. So, but know. he's apparently doing um, he's doing another movie. Was it for Terminator? Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, what the, the hell? The reboot. <laughs> of the reboot of the reboot. <laughs> Nothing like a double reboot. To yeah, yeah. Got, right. got to get in those reboots. <laughs> yeah, him and Stallone are making a lot of new movies. Uh, yeah, but Stallone still looks good. Like Stallone is like the same age as Arnold, but Stallone looks like a he still looks rock solid. Well, you can tell he's aged, but like he doesn't look anything like Arnold anymore. Yeah, that's like, I true. honestly think Stallone looks better now than what he did back <laughs> in the eighties. <80s. laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean It was never really that good, so so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when we come back we'll give our, our thoughts and history of this video game. More of it, I guess, in a way what we already gave you, so stay tuned. back everybody hope you listened hope you liked that uh song that legs chose i don't know which one it's going to be hopefully she can find some good ones yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh we'll start with you mo what is your what's your thoughts and history of this video game so yeah i uh, played this game pretty early in my life as uh, a friend of mine had it when i was a kid so i borrowed it from him i think it was like a soccer buddy yes i played football but I'm saying soccer because soccer. other ways a lot of people 
think I played American football. Uh, but yeah, no. So normal, real football where you use your foot and a real ball. That's what I played when I was a kid for two years. And then wow. I got tired Shots. of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I borrowed it uh, back then from a friend. And yeah, I, I beat it pretty easily. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I was, of course, a fan of the movie. Um, like any 80s kid, I guess. Who, <laughs> when you grew up, then you... Even if you were only six or seven years old, you had seen all the, the Stallone and the Jean-Claude Van Damme and, and the... The Arnold movies, of course, um, even if technically you weren't allowed to. But um, yeah, I thought it was, this was a really fun game. I never had troubles with it as a kid. Um, I played it again, of course, for Portable Pleasure some time ago. Um, and still enjoying the game a lot. So um, I think this is a really fun game that gets uh, under the radar because it's just so general. Um because it, it's nothing special or anything, but it is a fun game to play through. Um, I, I definitely remembered how everything worked in that game, even if it had been 20 years that I played it before. Um, having so many different weapons to use on different enemies is cool. Um, you can just walk past them if you want to, and if you know how their patterns work, but it's more fun to just take out everybody with, with all the tools you got available for you. Um, like lobbing a grenade over a wall just to take one down is, is something that's always a lot of fun. Um, when I originally played it, I did remember the last boss giving me a lot of trouble, but with the revisit, um, well, I, I kind of found something. That that really helped a lot. <laughs> so, but I'll talk. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in a uh, in a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is a game that ever since that I originally played it, I have been uh, making people play. Um, <laughs> usually, people do not really like it because uh, it's yeah so lackluster and so uh, so general game. Um, but yeah, so people usually end up hating me for suggesting it in the first place. But I think a lot of people, since I played it on Portable Pleasure, have actually looked into it and kind of enjoyed it themselves as well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, when when I played it, I, I played the Super Nintendo version as a kid. I I remember I remember renting the game from a from Blockbuster or wherever it was, and uh, I I. I remember like getting like probably halfway, maybe three quarters of the game on the Super Nintendo version, but I don't, I don't think I ever beat it. Um, but I, I had friends growing up that had this game for like the Genesis as well or the Super Nintendo. So um, it, I didn't grow up with the Game Boy version, but I definitely grew up with the game itself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love the movie. Like Mo said, like if basically if you were an '80s kid, you you watched you. you Things were different back then. Is all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, for Game Boy event, I I literally like I just finished Alien Three, I think, and um, I was doing something. I was doing something to like something easy because like Alien Three took me like five or six hours to beat. And Mo was just like, and then I was doing a raffle or whatever, and like Mo always complains that he never wins raffles, so I just like gave him a pity win basically. And uh, I was like, Mo, pick a game, and he picked True Lies for me. I'm like, all right. And I'm like, saw that it was LJN. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like I know how this is going to go now, and I hopped into it, and I was immediately reminded of Alien Three, and I'm like, fantastic. I love playing Alien Three again, which is another LJN classic. <laughs> um, so, um, as I was playing through it, I was like, oh, this, I mean, it feels, it, ha it has a very similarity to Alien 3. I, I'm sure they probably use a very similar engine to Alien 3 mm, with this game. Yeah. Um, but it honestly, like, I, it felt like Die Hard from the NES. I was like, oh, okay. Like, this is honestly like an easier version of Die Hard for NES. Like, I don't have to worry about my feet health. I don't have to worry about, like, a bullet hell on the screen or anything like that. Like, I can just, like, I kind of, kind of, like, nonchalantly, like, casually go through a level and take out enemies as I go. Um, I thought the, uh, I thought the, uh, the weapons were actually a pretty interesting choice. Like, sometimes you get an Uzi, you get the pistols, and, like, and certain weapons had limited ammo, so you had to, like, be a little peculiar about what you did with it, but, um... 
I didn't. I don't think I game over in this game at all. Um, if I did, it was very very early on, just because I didn't know how to play the game. But this game, like if if you just take your time and play through the game, like you'll get so many one ups and health upgrades. It's kind of ridiculous um, on how easy the game actually is and how well it rewards you for actually playing the game and not just running through it like a like an idiot. Um, but getting to the final boss, like I think I died like three or four times on the final boss. It's like wow, I'm like this final boss is harder than I realized. I'm like, oh wait a minute, you can just do this and beat the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, overall though, I thought the game was 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 good. Um, not the best Game Boy game I've ever played by any means, but for a top down <laughs> for a top down shooter. I thought it was actually a pretty pretty well designed game. Like I've played a few top down shooters already for Game Boy Adventure, um, Total Carnage, Alien Three. Um, there's a couple others I can't remember off the top of my head, and uh, this one is probably is, ranks quite high so far out of all the games I've done. That's that's a top down shooter. Yeah, like even for um, games based on movie licenses, this is probably one of the better ones on Game Boy. Um, I've played Judge Dredd. I've played um, what's the other one that's kind of similar to Judge Dredd? It's like they all kind of feel the same. Um, but yeah, those all together. those games are not really good. Like I talked about Beetlejuice as well, which is just. A bunch of mini Gross. games thrown together and, and things like that. Also an LGN game, of course. Uh, but yeah, this is for a movie-based game back in the 90s on Game Boy. This is probably one of the better ones you're going to find. Um, yeah. It's just really fun to play to. It's not too hard, especially not. And, and this ties into what happens to the final boss. Um, if you know the enemy placements... Um, if they are off screen, they are not guided towards you, but you can still shoot them from off screen. Um, so you can take it a little bit easier. And well, besides being in in like very uh, narrow corridors where you have to guide them towards you, but there's always a way to position yourself uh, in such a way that you cannot get hit, but you can still shoot the enemies. And the same goes for actually the final boss, um, <laughs> which is different than the movie um but it's it yeah it, it, it borrows from it uh the final boss is actually standing on uh the harrier shooting yeah. towards you um and you're supposed to of course engage him and then dodge all of his bullets i think he has a machine gun or something um yep so yeah you 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 have to just defeat him that way but if you just um scroll the screen when he, where he's off screen and you go uh, duck into a corner you can just keep shooting upwards hoping to hit him because he moves around from the left to right so you're not sure if you're hitting him but if you just stay there and you keep shooting he will eventually die and your uh, your original weapon has unlimited ammo so even if you run out of your machine gun or anything like that you can just keep on shooting and you'll win eventually so that makes it a whole, a whole lot easier what I did is I kept my guy on the screen, but I had a crap ton of grenades. And uh, I got to the corner by him, and he couldn't hit me. So if you ducked behind a box, he couldn't shoot you. But you could lob grenades at him the entire time. Yeah, see, it's stuff like that. And and you, you use those techniques during the game as well, actually, which is smart. Uh, maybe it's not... Uh, meant to be programmed that way but it is just a smart way to dealing with uh with hazards that would otherwise put you in a bad position because there's one i think if i remember correctly one downfall to this game um there are no checkpoints so if you die anywhere in the stage you have to restart it from the start and all the enemies are back so um so yeah it's better to take it a little bit slower yeah that was one thing that I disliked about this game. I like like the like the actual stages aren't very long by any means, but there are times like I'll use the mall for example. I think the mall and the park are like the two longest stages in the mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. um, and like the mall, you have to go up and down floors to get to your destination to blow up whatever it is you need to blow up or collect or whatever it was. Um, I think that's the first boss fight actually. Is it? Yeah, I, th I think there's three boss fights in this game actually. Well, you have to collect data pretty early on. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. first and, stage. Yeah, 
in a way. But, like, you have to go up and down floors in the mall. And after a while, like, you don't remember, like, the order in which you went up and down the floors. Because if you went up this one step, you can't go back down. So mm-hmm. if there's a gun on the other side of, like, the flower box, but you you missed it because you decided to go up the, the first steps instead of the second steps, like, you can't get that anymore. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you don't remember the pattern and everything else and you die, then you have to start the entire stage over again. Sometimes that can be a, a, a you know, a breath of fresh air. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to go up this set of steps instead and grab that gun, you know, and then, come, you know, and then go around the long way. Um other times you're like, wow, it's not worth the go that way. I'll just take this side instead. But sometimes you may forget that in the heat of battle, you know, trying to run away from people, etc. Um, and then you die, you know, but there's no checkpoint at all. So you're like, I don't know which way I went. I don't know where I am in the stage. And then the the park stage, I would say, is probably the worst stage in the entire game because everything looks the same mm-hmm. in the park stage. Yeah. Um, everything is just a square with a pathway. Like, you just don't know where you're... Like, you, you know where you're going, but at the same time, you don't know where you're going. Like, you know that you're on the path to to the end of the stage, but everything is so monotonous and everything is just so bland and the same that it just looks like you're going into a circle forever and ever and ever. Um, and then again, when you get killed, you start at the beginning of that stage, you have to go through all of that again. Mm-hmm. It's just like... I wish there was at least one checkpoint in the game or in the stage where it was just a halfway point and that's it. Kind of like what Donkey Kong does. Like in Donkey Kong, if you get your halfway point, you start off halfway through the stage. There's only like usually only one checkpoint in a Donkey Kong game. And if you if you decide to skip that checkpoint, then if you do die, you start the entire stage over again. That's like, like your own dumb fault for not getting the checkpoint. Uh, I wish this game had something similar to that, like something you could shoot. Or something that you could collect, you know, just something to let you indicate that you get a checkpoint and you can move on from this point forward. Yeah, definitely something they could have used during the stages with multiple floors. Just have a have a save point right after you uh, you go to another floor or something like that. But yeah, they didn't. Uh, but again, it's not a long game. It's not no. that hard of a game. It's, it's just a little thing that could have uh, made it a little bit better for more casual players. Um, but yeah, I can definitely recommend just playing it anyways. Like, you took two hours, I took an hour and a half. So it, it's definitely not that hard. Yeah, this was game 126 out of 581 for me. So, <laughs> 21%. Yeah, you have that percentage, I don't. Would just make me depressed, I think. <laughs> Makes me depressed some days too. Yeah. At it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. you know, thinking of, like like thinking or like reflecting on your history of the game. It's interesting that you had friends that had Game Boy games, because reflecting on my childhood, almost none of my friends had Game Boys. The only time I can recall ever borrowing a Game Boy game was I borrowed Super Mario Land 2, awful game, and uh, (laughs) I borrowed (laughs) Super Mario Land 2 from a friend, and the only other games that he had was Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, and probably Pokemon Yellow eventually. Um, But like most of my Mm -hmm. friends never had Game Boy games. Like they'd have like one or two Game Boy games, and that's it. Like they were all about the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, or the NES, or the Master System, you know, whatever it was, like the big TV consoles. So it's it's interesting. Maybe it's a European thing. I have no idea. But it's interesting to hear that you had friends that had Game Boy games, such as like True Lies and whatever else. So Yeah, Yeah, it's um, like all the kids my age back then pretty much had a Game Boy, so... um... Yeah, that's that's literally what you got. None of them actually had an NES or a Super Nintendo. It was usually the older brothers or sisters that had those, but they weren't allowed to play it or anything. Um, but yeah, all that I know from between the age of pretty much four when I started gaming until uh, um, ten, um, it was all Game Boy all around. So that's crazy. That's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like I bought my Super Nintendo during the last year that, uh, well, well, of its running cycle, actually, uh, I bought it back then. So I was the only one who had something that you could play on your TV, actually. Like I, like <laughs> I remember growing up and like my 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 parents would buy the consoles for the TVs, like the NES, the Super NES, etc. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I remember when my parents bought the NES. I was very young. I was four or five. Um, and it was one, it was the first console I ever played. But I remember growing up, like I didn't care if I had a Super Nintendo because I had an NES and I loved the games I had for my NES. And I also had a game, and I also had a Game mm-hmm. Boy. Like I had a lot of games for Game Boy growing up um, because we were always doing like road trips and everything else. Like I, I lived in a military family, so we were always moving. So um, I had a Game Boy to keep me occupied in the car while we moved. You know, so. Um, I didn't have I didn't yeah. have a need or a want for a Super Nintendo at all until Super Game Boy came out. <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably why I bought it. So in the first, so place, like my yeah. my parents bought a SNES like right when it came out, and I and I almost never played the console. Like my mother played it more than my more than I did. Um, I just wasn't into the Super Nintendo. Like I wasn't into Donkey Kong or Super Mario World or any of that at all. But as soon as the Super Game Boy came out, or as soon as I got a Super Game Boy, I was like, I can play a Game Boy game on a TV now. And I played my mm-hmm. Super Nintendo <laughs> yeah. religiously after that. Um, so, and but after that, like I had an N64, which I would play a lot because I started getting into sports games then at that point. So I would play like NFL Quarterback Club and whatnot. And then once Pokemon Stadium came out, I could play Pokemon on the N64 now, and they have to have the SNES anymore to do it. Um, so I like I played Pokemon on, on my N64. Like I became a glorified Pokemon player at that point. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it's kind of interesting for me, like how my interest in consoles became to be, because it's like I didn't care about the SNES, I didn't care about the N64 until it had a Game Boy attachment where I could play Game Boy games on it. Otherwise, I played my <laughs> NES. Until I had to replace the pins in the back, you know, and being being a kid, not having a not having um, a resource to buy like the new seventy two pin connectors or anything of that of that matter, like yeah. the NES has sat in a box basically unusable at that point until you know ten or so years ago when I replaced it all. But mm. uh, it's it, it, yeah, it's weird. Like I was probably one of the I was the quote unquote weird kid I guess growing up when it came to consoles. Like all my friends love the Super Nintendo, love the N sixty four, PS ones, and here I am like still playing NES and Game Boy when I'm ten, thirteen years old, you know, so Yeah. Like maybe it's I never grew up in a family of gamers, so like my parents do not game at all. The only game they have ever played is Tetris on my Game Boy <laughs> back then. And then all those uh those mock off handheld thingies that only had Tetris on it that you could buy everywhere. Um, There's a lot of those in in shelves downstairs here. But yeah, before that, uh, they never had like a gaming system. Um, Like Atari and and things like that are really hard to find here because a lot of people just did not buy those things. Um, NES is probably one of the earliest consoles that you could find in some homes. Like my uh, cousin had one. So that's the thing where I started gaming on like my first game was Mega Man 3 um I grew up with that which was a really yeah. hard game for a four year old but, I, but yeah. I still beat it so so that that's that's really cool and then I got a Game Boy as soon as it got released uh in Belgium so that was my entire gaming career until well the same deal actually I just bought a Super Nintendo to buy my Game Boy games on a TV um, I did have, of course, Zelda and Kirby and, and yeah. other games like that. Uh, sometimes I, I bought some off the flea market for like a few bucks or something like that. Uh, that's definitely I had a few games on it, um, but it's it has always been Game Boy until PlayStation One actually arrived in Europe. Um, and for those who don't know, yes, it did uh come out the same time as n64 basically but not in europe uh n64 (laughs) came out a year later uh so nobody here had a nintendo 64 luckily Uh, (laughs) but yeah everybody just like literally everybody had a playstation so that's when the console gaming started um since then, I've I've literally had every console there ever was, besides the Xbox consoles, because there's nothing anything on it that I really want to play, so I never bought one. P- PS One for me, PS One for me is a weird console. Like, like I wasn't into the whole memory card and the disc type thing. Like, I hated loading screens, and I hated having to have a 
have a memory card to save anything. I'm like, I have it all on a cartridge with a battery right here. What could go wrong? <laughs> um, the only games I would play for PS1 growing up was Metal Gear Solid, Siphon Filter, um, Final Fantasy VII, obviously, and all the Twisted Metals. That's all I would play. Like, I wouldn't play anything else at all, you know? So, uh, and I didn't, and I didn't have a PS one growing up. Like my friends had a PS one and it's like, what are you, you want to play X, Y, Z game? Like, no, I want to play twist and metal. I want to play sweet tooth. You know, <laughs> it's like, I don't want to play anything else. I only like twisted metal. Um, yeah, I had probably 100 games myself on PlayStation one and all my friends had that many as well because there was something very cool about having a PlayStation 1. There was always somebody who knew how to mod ship it. Um, so after a while, which was probably two months after you bought a PlayStation, you had a modded one. So you could just burn your games onto a CD. So what we did is uh, we went to, yeah, what, what Blockbuster? I don't know, it's not called blockbuster yeah, Blockbuster. but yeah we basically. we went with three friends to blockbuster we each rented three games for a weekend and the only thing we did is copied them and then we all had them forever so that's fantastic yeah, that's what we did and so we had pretty much all playstation games so i'm very fond of that system and now i'm actually buying all those games because i don't have an actual copy of them so I have him every time I see one that reminds me of uh, of back then that I actually played and really liked. I just buy it because it's usually only five dollars or something. So they're pretty cheap. Unless it's Parasite Eve. Unless it's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> one f- cool thing I did like about the PS One though, I would eventually get a PS One. Like um, I think I was in high school when I got a PS One, um, and I got GTA one Mm -hmm. with the london you know expansion on yeah and i I wasn't like i i was having one of those brain fart days you know how like sometimes you like you take like a box of cereal or whatever a bag of cereal and you accidentally put it into into the fridge like wait a minute that was stupid you take it out (laughs) i had i had one of those moments where i put a gta disc into my cd player and it started playing music Mm -hmm, from the game mm -hmm. and i'm like whoa you can listen to end game music from the disc if you put it into a CD player. I was, I was, my my, my mind was blown. <laughs> yeah, that was a cool thing. Um, also, if you had a, I think it was a Game Shark. I don't know, uh, but I had definitely something. I should look for it. Actually, I don't know where it is. Uh, well, what you could do is get into the boot me and menu where you would put in all the the cheat codes you wanted for the game but what you could also do oh, is yeah. watch all the movies that actually were on the disc oh, really? without even playing the game so that was also a pretty cool feature dude imagine watching metal gear solid one <laughs> yeah you could do that or final fantasy 7 yeah that's i saw the ending of final fantasy 7 before i even finished the game just because i could do that <laughs> good times good times oh man God, our childhood was great. I feel bad for kids nowadays. Yeah, you guys have a uh, time. It, I mean, it's not even... It's, have a, <laughs> it's weird. It's it's such a weird generation. Like, I like I look at my cousins and, like, how they grow up and, like, the things that they the things that they do to play on. It's like, man, if I had that as a kid, I'd be ecstatic. You guys just take it for granted. <laughs> for sure. Like, yeah. like, like, Pokemon Let's Go, like... Ever since I started playing Pokemon, I'm like, man, it would be so cool if I could actually throw a Pokeball at something, like mm-hmm, arm mm-hmm. motions and da 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 da. And now we have that. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. And like, some kid could watch me play, and like, wow, what is this idiot doing? Like, it's just a video game. Like, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I was like, like, if you guys like go back and like listen to Mo and I playing Pokemon together, like, if you hear some idiot screaming in the background in excitement, <laughs> that's probably me because I was. I was I'm hyped to play the game. Like I love the game right now. So yeah, I love the game as well. Besides that, my controller is busted as hell. <laughs> I can't throw a single ball correctly. That, it's that poor butterfree. Yeah, that was a fun <laughs> time. Oh my god. Oh man. So after that tangent, going into the speedrunning section of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. For this game, there actually are no speedruns. Like there's no leaderboard or anything. But I did find a uh, YouTube video called a playthrough 
but it's uh, it's a 20 minute video, so I'm gonna say it's definitely a speedrun in that case. Is it a full full playthrough? Yeah, it's a full playthrough. Yeah. Um, oh wow. Yeah, it's it's like in 20 minutes or something like that. Um, like always, when you look up videos on Game Boy on YouTube. There's not a lot of information about them. I have no idea what it is being played on. Is it an emulator or is it a recording of a Super Game Boy? No idea. I don't even know if it's like a tool assisted uh, playthrough or anything like that because a lot of the videos on Game Boy out there are actually tool assisted, but they uh, just pretend that it's a long play. So that's really sad. But yeah. If there is a speedrun out there, that is that is the thing to <laughs> to watch, I guess. Um, and like I said earlier, um, you can actually walk past any enemy in the game, and that's literally what this person or computer is uh, is doing. So if anybody wants to actually dive into the speedrun, that's a good step. There you go. I do like making leaderboards. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Huh. Yeah, I might have to check that out. Twenty minutes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I don't know if it's legit possible. Like that that's the thing with those YouTube videos. You see the guy dodge everything, but has he really dodged it or has he just like tasked it so that he dodges it? it, it yeah. So I don't know if, if it's viable to speedrun it that way or not, but yeah, it's definitely a something to start from. So Huh. Well that's cool. There you go. Whoever listens to this episode. Go go play True Lies Game Boy and make a leaderboard. Yeah, twenty minutes. That's that's not too bad. Atros will take that record in two days. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> For sure. Oh man. So yeah, when we come back, we'll talk about some community events approaching. We have a couple coming up soon, and uh, any questions that we're asking Discord. back everybody community events we have power up with pride coming up relatively soon uh let me go look up the dates real quick because I, f- I forgot to write them down um but i want to say it's like the s- the first weekend of december um and i oh we found out today what games actually get in oh yeah so, so they're recording a little bit too early then for that but well i mean oh 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 do we have submissions yet? So, okay, here we go. Uh, Winter Pride 2018, December 6th through the 9th. So, um, game list and schedule comes up today. Uh, I, I submitted... What the heck did I submit? I submitted Kid Nikki for Game Boy. That one's going to be the one I have to practice if it got in. Um, Kirby's Dreamland with a donation incentive of extra mode. So, if you want to support a good cause and want to watch me play the harder version of Kirby Streamland, <laughs> there's my plug for that. Um, and then I, I think I submitted a Shin Chan game, but Shin Chan is like a six minute game in a way, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think that's all I, I submitted. I know Legs wanted to submit Squidlet, which is um, not a Game Boy game per se, but it mimics Game Boy games like it's yeah. a steam game but it very much developed in a game boy style um yeah with with the winter sale coming shortly after this airs probably um squidlet oh, is yeah. definitely a game you could go and buy because it's like a dollar or something it's it's not yeah game. it's actually a pretty fun game yeah. like the speed run of it, it's like like 11 minutes or something like that casually i think it took me like 20 minutes to beat just because i wanted to explore some stuff it's a it's a very fun game uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty cute as well um I'll say that I don't know what games people submitted because I can't see the submission list anymore. Um, but uh, I'll be tweeting out if I get any games, and we'll, we'll I'll tell you I'll tell you where to find me later. So and it's going on right now when you're listening to this episode, actually, because it's oh yeah, <laughs> this episode comes out on the <laughs> the eighth of December. Um, so yeah, it's it's happening oh, right that's now. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, outside of that, we have AGDQ coming up uh, in January. 
which um, unfortunately Indy had to drop out from. So Mega Man Two Game Boy will not be at oh, HDQ. Man. Well, now um, now the only game get- that we have is Dragon Slayer. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God! What in the world? And then so they, the, they ask why Game Boy never gets taken seriously during those events. So the only OG Game Boy we have representing at AGDQ is... Let me pull up. I have the card right next to me, actually. <laughs> is Dragon Layers of the Legend by Ubisoft. So Aww. I also have the True Lies card next to me, too. <laughs> How about that? Um, so got that coming up. Um, Midwest Speed Fest is doing a... Winter speed something or another. I forgot what they actually called it. Um, those submissions are actually open now, and I think they close at the end of December even. Uh, they usually go on for a long time, and that's going to happen in, I believe, February. Um, it's a, both an on-site speedrunning event um, hosted in Minnesota, and it can also be online as well. So what they do is that during the day, so like from like 10 a.m. to like 10 p.m., it's all on-site runs. And then Mm -hmm. everything overnight is online runs. So it's actually pretty interesting. And so some Europeans can submit to the thing. Um, East Coast, West Coast, Mountain Time, whatever, can submit to the thing and get in as well. It's not just a Midwest-centric speedrunning event unless it's on-site. So it's actually pretty cool. I did did Midwest Speed Fest this summer. I did uh, KDL Lecture Mode there. And it was actually pretty fun. It's, It's a very, very small... We were like in a closet basically with this thing. It was actually a pretty good time. So <laughs> um it, it felt like a it felt like a small get together. It, it was just good. It was just good. It was fun. Um you guys should submit to that too. The, the the organizers are great people. So um outside of that, I can't think of any more events coming up, uh at least within the next few months, obviously. <clears> the <throat> summer. We're, we're we're in the slow time for marathons because it's the holiday season, it's winter time, it's et cetera, et cetera. Things will start picking back up again towards spring and summertime with SGQ, RPG Limit Break, RGL is probably going to have some marathons going on, et cetera. You know, with the things, that, things that are coming up later. So, um, yeah. Let's see here. Pull notes again real quick. Questions. Uh, <laughs> so, we did get one question from Pianist Man. Uh, Pianist Man usually likes to ask us speedrunning questions, even though we don't really speedrun anymore. Um, <laughs> but he asked, he asked, let me pull up the discord real quick. Uh, oh, look at all these Arnold Schwarzenegger memes. Um, uh, I tried this game <laughs> several times. What, what are some of the best strats here? Um, the best strats, if I had to give you advice for this game is play it on, play it on, can I, am I allowed to say that in public? Play it on. Something that you can that allows save states. <laughs> um, <laughs> play it on something that allows for save states. Save state before each level and play through each level a couple of times so you understand where the enemies are and how to approach the stage. Um, that way, when you go through the stage, you can just run past them <laughs> mm-hmm. because that's honestly the easiest thing to do. Yeah, is just run past people. Absolutely. Um, that's and that's the that's the strat right there. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not on game facts, but if there's maps available of the game, um, just literally write down your route on it. Uh, maybe maybe um, write down where the health packs are because those are useful. Um, or the extra lives if you need those, and then just just make a, a good route so you can walk past everything. Yeah, I think that's the that's the best way to tackle this game. And then some yeah. boss threats, I guess, where you find a, a good positioning that you can hit them, but they can't hit you. Or if you want to do it a little bit more aggressively, find a, a weapon that takes them out very fast. But I think most of the bosses take like a million hits, so the safest they, way to they, better. They're tanks, yeah. yeah. So unless you have grenades or rockets or something, yeah, it might take a bit. Hmm. Um, but not saying that there's no glitches. Like, we don't know. There's no runs or anything. Like, we're not speedrunners, but <laughs> who knows? Maybe there's glitches. Maybe there's exploits. I don't We don't. Hmm. You know, whatever. Um, yeah. But outside of that, that's the only question we had in there. Um, but we had a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger memes. We have one with Arnold uh, buying the car or like <laughs> or taking a ride with, this, with the car salesman. Um we got one here, uh, Arnold driving the car, staring at the salesman after he's talked about his wife. Yep. And then we got one with Arnold in his bow tie and dress shirt 
Um, <laughs> yeah, that's when he's taking off his diving suit at the start of the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, when he's going to go to the party. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, go watch the movie, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it will definitely be worth it if you have never seen it before because it has some great one-liners, definitely. Uh, it's a pretty funny movie. And it's definitely action packed. Like the the ending is is brilliant, just brilliant. Yeah, the ending is the, the horse scene is is, is also worth there. It. Yeah, and that's pretty much at the start of it. it. It has just action throughout the entire thing. It's really fun. Or when he's kidnapped, he's like, "Why are you laughing? Because I'm going to kill you." Yeah. And then he just talks <laughs> about how he's going to do it. It's it. Just go watch the movie. It's so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! It does um, not bore. It it does not bore you. It it's it's an action. It's an action movie that will make you laugh probably yeah. more than anything else. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, if we're gonna close it out here, if you guys have any suggestions at all, um, feedback, whatever it is, please let us know either on Twitter or our Discord or wherever it is people leave messages nowadays. Um, we do read them. We do take them in consideration. Um, we're always looking to make this podcast better. And to make things better, we need feedback from you guys and your guys' thoughts and whatnot. So mm. and we also do listen to our own episodes amidst hating our own voices. So <laughs> yeah, um, It's always weird, but we do try yeah, to listen for before posting it. Uh, but yeah, there's still stuff we will miss. So oh, yeah. yeah, if we need to, need to edit something... Also, let us know. We can always just upload a newer version. That's no problem. It's true. Um, so you guys can find us. Uh, we have uh, we have the website up. So gb gbrunners dot com slash tigb. That's where you can find um, um, Mo, myself, and our great producer Legs. Is uh, YouTube channel, Twitch channel, Twitter. There's a Discord link on there. There's a Patreon link on there. There's a SoundCloud link on. There's a bunch of stuff on there. Um, outside of that, uh, we do have our playthroughs available for you guys to watch of True Lies um, on yeah. both Twitch and YouTube. So we'll try and make sure to get those linked up in the, in the description for this episode as well. Uh, we'll have to give Flakes the links for those because I don't want her to take the time to go find it herself. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else, Mo? No, like, yeah, Twitch and YouTube too. Yeah, if you don't want to play the game yourself, but you want to maybe watch it uh, on mute while you're watching, uh, listening to this episode, you can definitely see our playthroughs. I don't know if uh, any of the other Game Boy System challengers have done this game already. Um, I don't yeah, think sure. so, actually. I think we're the only ones. So, yeah, it's it's fun, like... If you if you want the true true, true lie if you want the true true lies experience you'll listen to this podcast episode while watching true lies while watching one of us play true lies while playing true lies on your Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a really with, great day. With the true lies cart and your Super Nintendo as well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not a Sega guy, so it's all coming Nintendo for me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that's that sounds uh, like a great day, though. Like, we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's a good two hours. Yeah. 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 yeah maybe just a little bit more about the Patreon. Um, yeah, you you can definitely become a patron from one dollar and up, and uh, some of the incentives you get right now are access to our episode notes access to special channels on our discord um five and up also have the ability to vote on listener selected episodes and we do have some things coming up in the future that we will add um i think lex is working on those in the background so um i'm gonna uh we have one goal on patreon right now which is 20 dollars a month which is for live recordings of each of these episodes um like i said last time we do have a youtube now um and we do have an actual twitch channel for um this is game boy so everything is going to be up there so uh, that's what we're trying to do but in general where does the money go to um it goes to uh, the hosting of the website the hosting of soundcloud 
actually paying Lex for once, um, and eventually also hiring a graphical artist to make us some more great stuff. So that that's where the money goes to mostly. Well, mostly yeah. all of it. Actually. All of it. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. <laughs> um also like a little side thing too like we have like a what was it behind the scenes channel and this is game boy discord yeah um as an added benefit to patrons not patreons apparently mm -hmm. patrons um you guys also have access to the behind the scenes channel even though we may not talk a lot in the discord itself um you guys can hear how Mo and I actually interact with each other off the podcast. It's very, very similar off the podcast as well. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> our, our, our conversations you hear us have on the podcast are very, honestly, very natural. Like we've, we're, we're like this off, off line as well. So mm. um, it's not one of those force fit things. We, I, I was fortunate to have Mo as a podcast partner. So <laughs> it's, it's um, easy to start it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, here was the outro stuff. Oh yeah, next <laughs> the next episode. Oh, this makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said <laughs> earlier, uh, next time it will be Mo Mania, and I have thoughts about that game. Many, many, many thoughts about that. I game. do too, and we're on different spectrums. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. I cannot wait to do Mole Mania. This is gonna be amazing. <laughs> we'll bring legs on too. She can sit in the background. <laughs> yeah, just to listen. Since she, does, since she doesn't talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, oh. but uh <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll we'll be back then for Mole Mania where we're just gonna dig around. Um yeah, yeah, we are gonna dig around, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> oh man, when's our next light? When's the next light episode? Mm, your your next light episode has already come out before this episode. Is it already up? Uh, yeah. Uh, so oh. you, yours yours has been out two weeks before uh, this episode, and mine will be two <laughs> weeks you. after this. Tells you how much I pay attention to our SoundCloud uploads. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, no. You're, I just you're do the recording, and I just let you guys do everything. Yeah, else. yeah. The light episode that comes between this episode and um, the Mole Mania episode will be mine, and it will be about homebrew Game Boy games. Um, so yeah, if anybody has questions or, or any thoughts about that, you can definitely drop them in the uh, Discord as well, or, or on Twitter, or wherever else you want to contact me. So yeah. Look forward to that because that's it's going to be pretty cool, actually. I'm looking forward to it as well. Cool. So, yeah, the next time we'll next time we both see you guys together, we'll be talking about Mole Mania. We'll be digging into Mole Mania. On this episode of This is PlayStation 1... <laughs>